Hi, my name is Makoto Tokuyama. I'm an owner chef at Kokoro Restaurant. Let's do the sashimi of Ora King Salmon. Uh, handle gently. It shouldn't be like holding the only tail side. It's always like uh, my baby. You know, it's... <laughs> After I filleted the salmon, next step is cut into back loin and belly loin. Then start skinning. Skinning of the salmon should be done so you will be able to see a thin layer of silver skin still on the fret. This makes the sashimi more beautiful and also has very high umami and nutrition content. And remove the part of the middle of back and belly loin, but don't throw away as you can use for tatia. Now I'm cut into a good fillet size for sashimi. The edge of belly loin is what we call harasu. Let's slice the salmon for sashimi and sushi now. Sashimi and sushi slices are always cut against the grain. To cut good sashimi comes down to two points. One is sharp knife, two is index finger. Sashimi knife is designed to cut using the full blade by pulling the knife and therefore has a long thin shape. To utilize this, the way to hold the knife becomes very important. The index finger should be straight and firmly pushing onto the backbone of the knife. At the base of fillet, turn up the blade so it stands vertical against the cutting board. When plating a sashimi dish, I image the mountain in Japan. This is where the sharp cut edge of each piece of sashimi becomes important as these edges are placed upwards just like those mountain edges. This is one of the most important aspects of washoku, Japanese cuisine, to express the natural beauty of Japan in the display of the food. The oraking salmon has a bright orange flesh contrast with the pure white fat lines and beautiful texture and aroma. So it's easy to express the natural beauty and awesome taste onto your plate.